Hello and welcome to episode 18. In the last episode we worked on our fire magic spells and dealing damage to our characters and enemies. Well in this episode we're going to work on white magic spells. These are more curative spells that will help us heal our characters and buff them in combat. So it, let's get started straight away with our first white magic spell. So first of all for our white magic we need to actually make the white magic ability. So we go into our white magic folder make a child of our white magic ability and this is going to be called the cure and we'll put rank one and this is going to heal the player so on here we're going to add an effect to this go park system and we'll call it heal and there's one in there called heal okay it looks like that and the other one we've got in there is heal two which isn't too bad either we'll go for heal one i think and leave it like that okay so next i'm going to go into what i've done for my black magic one because it's going to be very similar in its design so on the black magic one we're getting the unit base and calculating the, the base amount of damage it's going to do well it's going to do a very similar thing for healing except for healing it's going to be adding health rather than taking it away so what we're going to do is I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to put it on our uh, white magic base and I'm going to open this up and put this in here okay so the main difference with this is that it has to heal um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the applied damage value coming out of here and we're going to make this multiplied by minus one now make it do take add health rather than taking it away this damage shot class because we've copied it over needs to be made here too so I'm just going to right click and create variable and it'll create it for us here Click compile and save okay and that's it all for the white magic base there are other white types of magic as well. Uh, cure is the most common one, but we could do other things like protect, uh, hasten, and other things like that. But for now, we're worried about it just healing. Um, but for one thing to note is if you do want it to do different effects, all you have to do is override the begin play. Okay, so next on to our combat component. We're going to go back to our combat component. And here we're going to add the like as we've got here cast black magic we're going to have cast white magic cast white magic and this is going to be very very similar so i'm going to copy pretty much all the stuff that you see on the black magic one and then make the changes i need to make so i'm going to copy this and paste this here and put that together there and we want to drag from this purple pin and add it to this event to add the ability to this. I want to then change the type here from actor to magic base and call it the class reference. Okay, hit compile and that should give us everything we need here. So at the moment we've got the spell target here uh, no longer exists on spawn actor. If I just refresh this It'll fix that for me there you go so uh, this is basically exactly what well, is exactly the same as the black magic one okay so it's going to go out in front of the where they normally are standing and do the attack now currently this position is a bit different this time because normally they would go into where their target is and run towards them however we don't want that to be the case in this case instance in this instance we want it to run just ahead of them regardless of who they are targeting because they could target themselves or an ally and if they target an ally that's going to run through each other so that's not ideal so what i'm going to do is i'm going to edit this thing to allow us to add the option to change how the targeting works so i'm going to make on the get range position a input and it's going to be a boolean and it's going to be um aim at target <clears throat> okay oh actually I'll, I'll take that back i'll call it targeting enemy 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 there we go and we'll put this into the select vector node here so select vector and move that to the side 
and move this lock down. Yeah. And the tar targeting enemy targeting enemy will go to the pick A. And what it means is when it's true, it will choose the A slot. So what we've currently got here, we're going to A. Now for um for B, what we do is just go forwards from where the company are. So I'm going to take what I've got here and copy this and paste it. And I'm going to plug the result into B. And I'm going to change the get unit direction from, I'm going to change this and just get the actor forward vector. So unit character get forward actor forward vector. And that will go into the multiplied by 500. Okay, and we want to add that to the actor location. So get actor location, and that goes there. Hit compile and save that. So now, if I go to my event graph again, on here I can just tick targeting enemy. Um, sorry, untick targeting enemy, and I like the default of that actually uh, ticked, so it saves us a bit of hassle. Let's go back into that and that'll be get range position and set a default for targeting enemy to true but back on the event graph I can turn that off with this one so with this one because they are targeting an ally or themselves this is what's going to happen they're going to go in front of them and then cast their spell uh, this will be playing the montage for the magic cast and it will then spawn the actor which is the cast itself here we're changing look at actor we don't need to do this we can keep that off and actually no we'll keep that on sorry my bad and we'll make that the case there um ai move to will happen when he has finished it make him move back to his original position and change the focus to unit ca uh, target and delay and then end unit turn and the spawn actor which is spawn the spell with the exact same settings as before so let's see how this works with this I'm going to go into my characters and we'll go to Greystone and we'll add on the combat abilities here the white magic abilities. We'll choose Cure. Compile, save that. And then I'm going to go back to my component. And we need to make it able to cast white magic. So if I go across to here and I can drag out my cast white magic in this slot here for false. There we go. Hit compile and save that. And then gonna push, uh, go into my white magic abilities and just make sure I've got this set up correctly. So yep, a spell name I'm putting in cure and the rank I'm going to put in is one. Okay, close that and let's push play. So the main thing that's going to be different with this is the targeting window because you don't want the target to be an enemy, you want it to be a friendly. So cure and you can see I can only target enemies here. Click this and you see they're targeting an enemy there. So what I want to do is change it to myself. So to change the target window, we need to go to UI and open up the target window and go to the graph and look at its populate target list. And in here, we're going to change who list is going to be used. So we've got enemy units being used by default here, but then we've got party units over here. Okay, so I want to change how the for each loop here is working. So I disconnect this array here and disconnect this array element. This array unit here is going to go into the array element again. Now what that's done is it's reset this array to be an array of unit based object references. So rather than plugging enemy units into here, we are going to plug it the other way around. So I can do on both just fine. So on here, we're going to drag the oh, select node. And in there, we need to put in the condition and the condition is the ability itself. So we're going to drag out the ability get and then from there, I'm going to see if it's a child class, child class of, and we're going to choose the black magic class. And that will go into the index. 
So if it's true, I want to use the enemy units. If it's false, I'll use the party units. Hit compile and save that. Okay, then we're going to go back to our unit battle HUD, the overall thing here. And after we've chosen an ability from our magic window, we want it to repopulate the list. So we're going to drag out from target window and do populate target list. Now just update the list to be of the type that you've chosen for your spell. Like so, and that'll do it. So let's test this out. And now we've got spells that we can target both enemies and white magic spells I can cast to Finley's. If I choose like Faye, for example, we go up to Faye, cast a spell on her. Okay. Now at the moment the camera's a bit messed up, and that's because of the way it works currently, because we copied it straight from the black magic one, in that it will stay where it currently is. We actually want to move it to the character who's receiving the the uh, the Finley attack. So let's go into that on the component and take a look at our white ma uh, white magic cast down here, and we've got this set look at actor here. Now alongside doing this, when we play the montage, I actually want to set the location of it as well. So I'm going to take from here, and from there we're going to set location, and set dynamic location. And the other actor is going to be the unit target. Compile and save that. And let's check out that working now on our white magic cast. Magic, white, cure, play, and now it's a little bit better. Okay. So that's the cast working. Let's test out the actual healing ability of it. So I'm going to go to the characters and I'm going to go to Faye and I'm going to set her current HP to be half of what her thing is here. Actually, I'll do it to all of them. So on the character base unit base we are going to go to here and i'm going to do hp max divided by two plugged into hp current so they will start at half health basically we can test the healing out now because the damage is negative it should allow it to heal so i'm going to go to magic white magic cure choose fey currently she is on 34 And that should go up to 47. Okay, so it automatically works for us because the damage system essentially is the same as the healing system. It's just a negative number instead. So I want to maybe change the color of the damage number based upon what number is actually being fed into it. So we're going to go into our damage numbers UI. And in here on the graph, on the pre construct, we're looking at the number here and looking at what we're going to do with this text. Now currently I don't want it to show the negative value, the sign. So I'm going to make it absolute. So I'm going to do damage amount abs. And that will get rid of the sign for me. Then I'm going to use that value here, not the absolute one, this one here. I'm going to see if it's below zero. Okay. And I'll move this all along. And we'll drag out from the text here, set uh, color and opacity. Plug this in. And then I'm going to break out this and do select, uh, say make slate color. And the specified color here, we'll do select color. And this le less than zero, we're going to pick A. So it's less than zero, it means that we are actually going to be healing ourselves. So for A, I'm going to make this sort of a green color. I do. And for red, we'll use the same red we've been using. So something around this. Fine. Hit compile and save that. Okay, so let's see if that works for us. Okay, so in the main game, we're going to go to magic, 
white magic cure choose fey and we should see some green numbers pop up there you go 14 came up there she got healed for 14 and likewise when i go to attack we'll do attack oh so at the moment the attack is broken because we forgot to populate it after we click attack because what it does it remembers what kind of setting you have so what we want to do here is go back to our populate on our target menu uh, target window so this is you're looking at the child class of this yeah so if it's false it'll go into using the party units but that also means if it is not even set it'll use party units so if this has not been set to anything i.e i'm attacking something i want it to use the um enemy units so we're going to let me separate these out a bit so for this i'm going to change how, around how the select here is going to work so rather than putting it straight into the index i'm going to put that its return value and not it so i'm looking for not black magic spells um and we also want it to only show um the player units if this is like so and ability has been sh uh, has been set so do is ability is valid and this will be an and class so and boolean put that in there so both of these have to be true in order for this to be true so now that it's true i want it to show player units so i'm just going to swap these around to be the opposite way around okay so now if ability hasn't been set when you populate the targets it should be okay So there's my enemy units let's try healing first and then see if it's okay we're going back to dealing damage and we we'll go to attack i can now choose enemies brilliant and there we have it we now have white magic and black magic in our game in the next episode, we're going to add some extra special features to our spells and game overall by adding a nice sound effects to it to sell the idea of us healing and dealing damage to characters. And you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can catch all my episodes early before anyone else. I will say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.